Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This is going to be an update video of the ESP8266 weather station. I've made a few changes and added some things so I just wanted to show you what I have done. So from the last video, basically in the last video you saw how the BME280 sensor was connected to the 1.3 inch OLED display to read the readings which included the temperature, pressure and humidity. However, I've now added kind of like a menu system and over here this is a capacitive touch sensor and essentially it acts as a button to um, flip through the pages. So if I just t touch it, it moves to the pages. So this was the last screen you saw and now if I touch it, it moves to page 2. And as you can see in page 2, there's the altitude as well as a dust reading and this dust reading is taken from this dust sensor over here I believe it's the Grove dust sensor from Seed Studio and it doesn't use an I2C interface but it uses a standard um, analog interface so it's a three pin um, we see the black wire for ground, red wire for VCC and the yellow wire which goes to um, basically any one of the pins on the ESP8266 I have connected the signal wire or yellow wire to D3 on my ESP8266 and I have to find that correctly in the program for it to work. And it essentially gives a reading in um, PCS and yeah, it just reads the dust concentration. It's a really nice sensor. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not that big, um, but I think it's quite valuable to this project. So yeah, as you can see, this is just uh, the menu system. The Capacity, the capacitive touch sensor can be quite sensitive, so, um, and I think it's, it works much better um, compared to a button. I really like just pressing, just, you know, lightly touching on the capacitive touch sensor compared to a button. So, yeah, as we see, we have now the full readings from the BME 280, um, including the altitude, as well as the readings from the dust sensor. And as usual, um, I will show you in the code how I did it, but we see the time and date still displayed on every page of this little menu system over here. So what I wanted to add also for this update video was readings in Lux from this light sensor. But after testing it a bit, it didn't really work with the ESP8266. I haven't tested it on a normal Arduino, but when I did, um, it was a few, a very long time ago. So. Um, I'm not too sure what is going on with this light sensor. It may be some bad solder joints, but I may have to replace it. I do plan on replacing it. And instead of a normal light sensor in Lux, I will probably go for a, a UV sensor. So it gives a rough indication of how, um, the, how strong the UV is outside. So that's what I plan to do. And in addition, I do want to add a carbon dioxide sensor, but I do not have that at the moment. But I was thinking of um, adding not only a carbon dioxide sensor, but this gas sensor as well. I found this. It is a MQ2. And this sensor basically senses the presence of methane, propane, ethane, and I believe other natural gases. So I think it's going to be a useful part of this project and I'll probably add that to page two of the menu system on the OLED display. Um, however, um, I believe I have the main um, sort of structure of the ESP8266 weather station uh, grounded, especially with the, the menu system, which I spent a few hours working on. So I'm quite happy about that. But otherwise, um, in terms of going forward with the project, not only am I gonna plan to add more sensors, but I do want to add sort of a, a solar powered um, portable setup to this project. So if I bring out this module over here, so this is essentially a um, solar charge controller board, and this is a mini five volt solar panel. Um, I believe it's 300 milliamps, um, something like that. But yeah, this is essentially can uh, connect to a LiPo battery and what this does is from the solar panel, it takes in the energy, it charges the battery, and then I can use it to power this ESP8266. So I will be messing around with something like this in the near future. I'm trying to really make this setup fully portable. So 
um, I don't need to connect it to a, a computer or a power source and I can run purely on solar. So I'm quite I'm happy with this um, so far and I think that um, it's definitely going to be worked on more in the future and maybe even a case will be built for this project in the future. With that said, I will now move on to the code and show you some of the things that I've modified. Alright, so now I'm going to take you through the, the changes that I've made to the code. And most of it is the same. I haven't really done much in terms of um, the functions of the code. It's just I've added changes so that the dust sensor can work as well as made the page system with the capacitive touch sensor. So the first change, if I scroll down, is this. So these three lines over here, it's basically for the capacitive touch sensor as well as for the page, the, the different page numbers. So I will show you that later. And as you can see right now, the capacitive, the, the capacitive touch sensor is on pin D0. And so all of this is for the Grove dust sensor to work. And this is basically from, uh, I, I have a better explanation of the code for the dust sensor. Um, I've made an article about it on my website and I'll put that link in the description box. So um, I, I have a big explanation of what this code exactly does, how the growth sensor works. So this is just part of how to set up the dust sensor. And as you can see, both are inputs. And start time is it basically counts up from when this starts and once again it's what is needed for the dust sensor and yep this is basically um, how the dust sensor does its calculations in order to get the concentration which is displayed on the OLED display and over here this is basically what is used for the um, for the ESP to read the touches on the um, touch sensor, the capacitive touch sensor. And this is the function that I put. So if the pin is touched, if the touch state equals high, then the page number is below two. So firstly, it's going to clear the display. So this is the if statement over here. There's two if statements. So firstly, it will clear the display and then the page number is going to increase by one. So essentially, if I touch the capacitive touch sensor once, the page number increases by one. And here we see is all of the page numbers. So what I've done is from the previous code, when I was displaying all of the readings from the BME 280 sensor, I've set it into these page number if statements as well as these else if statements. And yes, you can see page number zero, page number one, and page number two. And from there, I can keep on adding as many pages as I want. And of course, it starts on zero, it doesn't start on one. So um, you just need to keep in mind that. And otherwise, um, that is basically it. There's not really other changes to this code. It's, it's a really simple code. I really enjoy this um, capacitive touch sensor being used in order to scroll through the pages. And the next time, you, in the next video, you'll probably be seeing um, further changes to the code as I interface more sensors and I improve on this code. And I will be uploading a Duino coin video um, going through some of the apps as well as the other um, different websites associated with Duino coin, the web wallet, the Duco monitor, etc. So um, expect that in a few days. Otherwise, thanks for watching and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.